one here. I find an interesting one, prompt for refresh after AP location change. I personally like to check that because when I'm doing my site survey, if I move access points, I like to be prompted to refresh the map so that it generates a new heat map. It's very easy to forget that and you move things around and you forget to refresh the heat map to give you the latest prediction. And so I always leave that one checked. I like that. The one above it that says display MAC address only, if you just wanted to have the MAC addresses of your access points and devices, you could do that. I personally like to see the manufacturer and the model number and, and more detail, but that was one option that you can do if you just want to display the MAC addresses. Underneath that, I have one checked here called Enable Survey Range Indicator. And that's quite a nice one if you leave that one checked it'll actually mark the survey data sampling range as you're on the site map. So that's quite a nice one to leave checked. There are some extra buttons down here as well that you should be familiar with. I'm just going to click on this one, the physical data rate map. And this is something you would use if you were doing a passive survey. And it allows me to map the specifics for my vendor equipment for the received signal strength with the data rate. And so if you want to do it for Pacific equipment, this is where you'd go in and enter in your manufacturer's information about the devices that you're using in your wireless LAN. Click OK on that. Going into the next tab, the AP grouping. If you are using an access point that has multiple SSIDs, this is where you would configure that because you don't want to be doing multiple measurements for the same access point. So this is a way of grouping your SSIDs and saying, no, this is the same access point. You can change the color of your display. And then over here in the 80211 tab, this is an important one. This is where I'd actually set up the security mechanisms of the wireless LAN that I want to associate with if I'm doing an active survey. And to show you an example here, I've already set it up to look at Avril's network. And if we come down and hit edit and come across to security, you can see that I've already set it up for the WPA2 personal authentication. I've defined AES as the encryption type and I've given it a network security key. This now is enabling my wireless adapter to actually connect and associate with my 802.11 network. So again, you'll want to set this up if you're doing an active survey. Let's come across now to the scan tab. Now this is where I specify what wireless channels I want to scan. And if you remember earlier, I said one of the best practices is to scan on the 2.4 if you're doing an active site survey and then to go back and scan on the 5 gigahertz band so that you don't miss any data points. So this is where I could do that. You see here that I've set it up for the country code of the US and if you scroll down here, I've currently got it up for the 2.4 and I do have it for the 2.5 as well. But notice here, I just have it for the Uni 1 and the Uni 2 bands, the Uni 2 extended and the Uni 3 bands. I've actually checked as no, I don't want to scan those. The map point is where I define the region. We just saw that there was an option there in the scan to then take the defaults for those different regions. And then over here I have profile. 
the profile tab allows me to store my configuration settings and then apply them for other surveys. So say for instance I've set it up for one floor at the train signal headquarters, what if I wanted to do another floor or an outside area and I want to keep the same parameters. So this tab will enable me to do that. So now you've seen how I can load a project and how I can configure the settings for doing my site survey. Now what I want to do is just talk about the GUI of the Air Magnet survey tool. So this area here is referred to as the map window. And this of course is where I'm going to display my floor map and uh, other data such as I'm going to put access points on here and I can do heat maps etc. Over here is my project window and this is where I can change what I'm displaying in my project window. And so for instance if I uncheck this you can see my map has gone, check it back it comes back and so it helps me control what it is I'm displaying in my map window. Below it I have the data window and you can see here that I'm using the Ubiquiti wireless adapter. I can set it here to do an active survey. This is also where I could change it to a passive survey or also an iPerf. Here I can choose the network that I want to do the survey for. So here I could choose Avril's network. The data below depends on whether I'm using an active or a passive survey. Coming down here below, I have my navigation bar and this allows me to navigate between different screens and so I could go into the planner which is part of Air Magnet Survey Pro I could do the survey I have a display option and then I have a multi view option over here on the right I have my legend and I can use different color schemes and patterns to display the results of my survey here I'm just using the default settings this here is a very important button. This is your refresh button. And this one will update the data on the screen, regenerate those heat maps. So remember earlier I checked the box to have a reminder when I move access points to regenerate the heat maps. This is the button that I would check to do that refresh. Above this includes the toolbar and the toolbar changes depending on which application I'm in. So if I come back here to the survey, you can see the toolbar has changed. And if I hover over these, it'll tell me what each of these icons means. We have the menu bar at the top that we were looking at before when we were opening a project and configuring the parameters for the survey. And lastly, this is the media type. If I click on that, you can see that I can choose to operate just in the 2.4 or in the 5 gigahertz or both. Depending on my wireless adapter, it may also operate and allow me to do a site survey in the 4.9 to 5 gigahertz band as well. So that concludes this demo on the Air Magnet site survey tool. So we've just taken a look at using the Air Magnet survey tool and we looked at how I can set up a new project, we can import floor plans, we can calibrate the dimensions and then I can define the RF environment and, and in our demo we looked at the open source office i.e. cubicles. Now we want to use that tool to actually perform a layer 2 site survey. And we can do a passive survey or an active survey. With a passive survey, I'm going to be looking at my received signal strength at different locations and distances away from the access point. 
with an active survey, my station that's doing the measurements is actually going to associate with the access point. If it's going to associate with the access point, it needs to make sure it's got the right security settings. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to place my access point in the corner of the train signal facility and then I'm going to use the air magnet survey tool to make measurements so I can work out where my cell boundary is. Once I know where my cell boundary is, that will tell me where to place my first access point. And if you remember, this was approach one of placing access points, and it's sometimes called the outside in. So I'm starting in the corner in order to work out where to place my first access point. So let's take a look at the air magnet survey tool. So I'm going to click on start.